Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, my name is um, Stephanie Hamilton, and this is Kara Lane. And we are the women of Ending the Gaming War. Today, we're going to talk to Joni and her son, Sammy. And we're here to end the gaming war between non-gamers and gamers. And we want to learn from one another. And that's what really we're all about is we want to end that war between gamers and non-gamers. And so we have a mom here who is a non-gamer with her gamer son. And we're going to talk about that journey that she went through. So, <laughs> Okay, so I'm excited today because we're going to take you on a journey. I actually do Zumba. And you do too, Stephanie, out there in Kansas. I'm in California. And so I met your sister, Joni, and then she shared my TED talk with you. And so that's our connection. Yeah. And then we found out you have gamer kids. And what I really appreciate about you, Joni, is you, you're constantly in support of your kids and their gaming, and then you'll tag me on things. So that's our connection. And so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself. And then the first question is, did you ever play a video game as a kid? Oh my goodness, that I, I love that question because I don't get to talk about my former gaming. In fact, he probably doesn't even know about my former gaming. <laughs> uh, but my name is Joni Rapier. This is my son, Samuel Rapier, otherwise known as Sammy. Um, he will be turning 15 in just about a week, uh, freshman in high school. Um, and I also have another child who's uh, 19, who's also a gamer, uh, kind of on a different level, different, different level gaming, but he's the one that really introduced the gaming to me, uh, but I'm married, have an awesome husband. We live currently in Los Angeles. And um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I work from home, which is fabulous. So I get to be with him a lot and I can I can see how often he games <laughs> and uh, and what's happening. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that's a little bit about us. So we, uh, and he's a very active kid. I mean, tell you a little bit about Sammy is he does, he does game, but um, he also does flipping, he does, uh, he learned at a parkour place. Uh, he does flipping and he also plays piano. So he keeps him and now more recently skateboarding. So he keeps himself very busy. Okay. You got to help us flipping. Is that the trampoline thing where you, yeah. oh my okay. goodness. I've been watching that on TikTok. Oh yeah. He, he hasn't been doing it as much. Um, not exactly sure why, but yeah. he transitioned. Well, because like the, ever since COVID-19, like the place where um oh yeah i do the flips and everything closed yeah. down and so i couldn't go there anymore and like practice but we do have a backyard one that he um jumps onto the roof and then off of the roof onto the trampoline it's super fun yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see gaming you're not gonna break your bones when you game parents <laughs> keep them gaming keep them safe <laughs> yeah, exactly all right, now the question to you joni did you play any video games when you were young oh, i can name them i can name them First one was um, Atari. Um, we got our first console when I was maybe 10 years old. And mm. the first one was Asteroids. Like literally, I don't know if you know this, literally it. you just shot at rocks and you broke up the rocks until there were no more rocks and you got a score. <laughs> um, and then of course there was the- I think there were spaceships, but rocks, spaceships. No, no, it was, it was first just rocks. Oh. Literally, Kara, you might be too young for that. <laughs> but it was literally just rocks. Um, but then I would do, and we didn't call it gaming. I mean, it was just video ga video games. Yeah. But a lot of arcades in my neighborhood, like um, the Circle K, which is like a 7-Eleven down the street, had centipedes, loved centipedes, loved Dig Dug, big on Dig Dug. And um, I never could say, it. is it Galaxia? <laughs> Galaxia, what's the Galaga. <laughs> Galica, I always said Galaga. it wrong. Yeah, yeah I like, love that one. But um, and Frogger. Way to go, Stephanie, answering that. I'm no, impressed. Okay. <laughs> and Frogger, love. So I was, I was that video game kid when I was younger. In fact, I even tried to steal because I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have a quarter to play a video game. And I put a nickel or a penny in, and I told the guy that it didn't work, and he nobody had played a game that day and he pulled out the penny and said there's only a penny in here and I got caught I never told you that have I anyway so Tammy, this is so cool you get to learn about your mom <laughs> yeah I haven't been told anyway so yes I loved video games when I was a kid uh that is so cool all right Stephanie you can ask the next question okay so what would you say your I know it's kind of a broad question but what's your philosophy as a mom like with raising your kids are you, yeah, it, that's a, 
it's a general question on parenting. Are you strict? Are you not? Are you supportive? Like what's your parenting style? Well, of course it's evolved. And I think every parent has an evolution or at least they should, right? They should have an evolution of it because my philosophy on parenting in general is that we shouldn't be dictators to our kids. We shouldn't be like, you have to do this. And this is what I said. Mm -hmm. I like to have communication with my kids and they said they have to be respectful, but Kara, when I watched your video, your, your, your TED talk, I mean, it literally made me cry. And one reason why was because I did spend time like you did. I hit that wall and then I realized, wait a second, why are my kids so passionate about this? I should try to understand them instead of telling them what they shouldn't do. So I, I was so in line with you on that. It literally brought me to tears because I felt like I took the time to understand my kids. And, and so I was proud as a mom that I did take the time and I, and I was happy that I hadn't damaged my kids, but I see a lot of kids being really frustrated with parents. Yep. And I just don't think that's what a relationship between a parent and child should be. I want to respect my kids, just like I require them to respect me. Mm -hmm. I require, I want them to require respect from me. You know, we are authoritative, like we are in control of our children's life to keep them safe. But as a parent, I believe we're supposed to strive to understand them and to not be their friend, but to be compassionate. I mean, I've unfortunately seen a lot of parents who are, are like I said, they're dictators. They tell their kids what to do, when to do it. And there's not a lot of love and care in that. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that that's how we're supposed to parent. So it has evolved though, because especially my husband, I won't throw him under the bus, but he's, he's a little bit older than me. And so his philosophy and the way he was raised was definitely do as you're told, do it immediately and do as you're told and don't ask questions. And so I took some time to explain it to my husband, actually, that we can't just tell the kids to pause the game. You can't pause the game. Just, I mean, I care. I watched your, your Ted talk again. It's like, you're not going to run up to the soccer coach and say, excuse me, my child has to take out the trash. <laughs> it's like, that is just the best. <laughs> And so it's like, right. It's like gaming yeah. is he'll, he'll explain that gaming is so important as you can't just interrupt your child's game. It's so disrespectful. So yeah. I yeah. hope that answered that question. No. That answered that question. And the next few, cause we okay. were going to say, what was your shift in the house and the moment le that led up to that? So if there's any more detail in there, was there <laughs> one time where you lost it and then you realized, oops, like what was your biggest shift? Yeah, I think there were several. I mean, maybe Sammy can help me figure out where the shift was because I do think that there was a shift in the house and it was that shift where there was that moment. I had the aha moment that my kids were seriously hurt. Mm. I mean, how much do we love our kids? We love them so much. Do we want to hurt them on a regular basis? Do we want to have them be upset and frustrated and have them not be understood? So I think there was a shift. I don't know if maybe that was a year ago or two years ago, like literally it wasn't too long ago where I started. And again, Carrie, I'm going to keep referring back to your TED talk because you gave me some tools in that TED talk, which was Great. Hey, Sammy. So Sammy tells me now, mom, I'm going to stream. And so um, I know his schedule of streaming. And I bring him dinner while he's streaming. So he'll actually eat on camera. If you watch some of his videos, he's eating dinner while he's streaming. I don't require him to come to the table. Now, if we had a different um, structure in our house, then I would say, Sammy, you can stream after six o'clock because we will have had dinner or maybe streaming between these hours aren't gonna work. So, you know, but it's communication. Right. It's communication. So I do believe there was a shift and it was when I think I saw my kids get really upset when yeah. we just pulled them out of the game. Like, no, you have to stop now because we said so. And I started to investigate what that meant. Kind of like you did, Kara. Like, what Excellent. does this mean? Excellent. Yeah. Okay. That's why we wanted to interview you because um, I, I hope that my TED talk was the voice of many. I yeah. want it to be the voice of many. Here's my issue is how do I get parents who are not supportive to watch that or to hear us right now so that we can help them. That's all. We just want to help other really we're helping kids and it's not like gamers or kids want to listen to my Ted talk. It's, we got to reach these parents so that they have that in their life. Yeah. Maybe it's kids. more kids speaking up, you know, I mean, obviously he's here with us yeah, and, um, and so he'll talk about his point of view and what Sammy would, I'd love to share is that the, that emotion, like, what is it, what does it do to you when your parents don't understand when they can't understand? Mm. Yeah. I think, I think parents hearing from a child, is really impactful. 
Yeah. I also think though that, like, I hate to say, Sam's going to laugh, but I'm not a boomer, but people <laughs> who, um, <laughs> the older, our generation, the Z generation Xers and older don't understand and we want to help them understand. So I'm hoping we're a voice for that because sometimes yeah. when a kid says it, they're just like, oh, that's a kid. That's their perspective. So sometimes I do like that we have voices of adults that are older going, no, you need to listen. You need to pay attention. That's true. You that's need good. to be attention. Um, yeah. How would you say you've created the balance though in your home with the gaming and his life and um, his flipping and and his piano and school, how would you say that you're learning to balance that? Well, I think every child's different. So I think every child needs a, a certain amount of guidance. Um, we're very fortunate with Sammy where he is kind of his own guide because he's really good at knowing his uh, his timetable. Like, like recently, I'll just kind of call you out a little bit, but he had a really frustrating week last week with school Mm -hmm. And he realized that he procrastinated or he hadn't spent enough time. And mm -hmm. instead of, and again, I'm not saying this as a per perfect parent that you should do what I'm doing. I'm letting you know what I'm doing and I'm still figuring out whether it works or not. But I kind of let him ride that up because he has a conscious about it. It's, mm -hmm. He does care about school and he cares about his performance. Um, so I let him figure that out. I kind of let him figure out the balance. Like, well, do you think you should be streaming then today if uh, you're behind in school? Um, so he is really good about that. And also he's, he, he's, he's a little bit of a special kid in, in a good way where <laughs> literally be like, I need to get up and I need to do some push-ups and sit-ups right now. So he'll be out there, he'll exercise and he'll also play the piano. I mean, that's not something that we like pushed him to do. That's something that he wanted to do on his nice. own. So I am fortunate. Um, I do have another son who, who, you know, like kind of give you an example in life, whether it be gaming or anything, I find, especially as they become teenagers, it's not that we tell them what they should do. We give suggestions. Yep. And, and like my oh, son, teenagers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So because then they fail because maybe they didn't take your suggestion and it's real life consequences. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, my mom said to do this. And actually that probably would have, been, but if we just tell them, they never learn. They, if we just tell them all the time what they should do, you're gonna do this. They don't get an opportunity to fail on their own yep. or succeed on their own and realize actually I maybe knew something that my mom didn't or, or to surprise themselves. You know, So I think giving kids, especially teenagers, um, more opportunity to, to um, to express themselves and to figure it out for themselves and fail. The only way you can succeed is by failing because really that's what leads to success. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, Sammy, uh, we are going to start transitioning to you now. Uh, jo Joni, we just appreciate you and being a voice to, and our heart is, is just out there. Like we keep saying, you're literally, people are seeing our confident vulnerability today that we're not perfect parents at the same time my goodness we don't want to frustrate our kids into just being you know frankly distant from us so thank you all right sammy hi we're so glad you're with us so tell us what is your favorite video game presently and why well right now my favorite video game and has been for a while like years is minecraft probably heard of it's like one of the biggest games like of all time and so I just had a really fun time playing it because you get to play with your friends on it and like build and do stuff together in the game and that's what I like about most games is that like games where you're just playing by yourself like really isn't as fun it's when you get to play with others is what really makes it like fun and so that's what I really like about Minecraft because you get to play with your friends all the time on it awesome so what was your first game that you ever, you ever played as a kid? Um, well, I was going to say, I would say Minecraft, but the thing is I'm before that, like when I was really young, I just go on like random websites where they'd have like some random website game where it would just be like, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't, there was like a website called kizzy.com. I don't know if it's taken down or not, but I, I would play on it. There'd be like these random games, like, I don't know, kick a soccer ball or something it, it would be really random but I just remember playing on this these random website games like 
and like you, I think you got uh, me into some of those games. Remember those ones where it was like the blobs or something that went together? Do you remember that one? There's some blob games. There's a lot of games. Like there's like <laughs> ones where you just you have to like control and roll a ball into like a goal or mm. like go past obstacles. Like a bunch of li- little fun games on like these websites. Yeah, no, I've seen them. Yeah, my kids played them too. <laughs> okay, so Sammy, what what would you spe- what do you specifically appreciate your mom doing to support you in this journey? Well, she just she really allows me to like she doesn't like let me like spend all day like 12 hours like mm-hmm. just constantly playing, but like she really like she lets me spend the amount of time that like is like necessary or mm-hmm that I don't know like how to put like she she knows like how much time like I I should be spending and how much like time I I like spending on it and she also like supporting like how how much I play and how how much it means to me by playing with friends and also just not like saying get off the game even though I like if I'm in the middle of a game and so she'll she knows like how important you would say you appreciate her understanding yeah yeah and her, she like wants to know about it. That's what it also sounds like too. Yeah. yeah. Do you, Sammy, remember a time when she wasn't as supportive and you had to explain to her? Yeah, I do. I feel like sometime back, like like all, I feel like a lot of the time I'd be in a game and be like, come on, we gotta go, like get, get off the game. And like, it happened all the time. And then we'd get really frustrated with each other. I'm like, I'm in the middle of a game. I can't just pause it. And so, and so that happened a lot before. And I feel like it's gotten better or it doesn't really happen at all really. That's cool. Wow. Doesn't happen at all. That's incredible. That's the power of communication, isn't it? Um, I am going to ask you a question. Uh, Sammy, what do you, what do you as a freshman in high school see as a positive aspect of gaming? Like if you were to make a case and you had your own show and you wanted to talk to older people, why would you say gaming is good? Um, well, I would say gaming is good like as a teenager because um, I don't know, it's a really good I don't know, like from break from school, I guess, like from t- doing something else, like to do with your friends, but also um, something to like look forward to because um, I have like a YouTube channel, I'm trying to grow it. And so I think like starting from a young age, like if you're like, like, cause I could just be playing video games just like with my friends, but mm. I've like started a YouTube channel, I'm trying to grow it. And I feel like if I like start like young and like try to grow like a channel, which uh, you can like make money off it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just trying to slowly grow that. And so if I do that, it could be a potential job, but it's like really low percent chance of happening. But if I just like start from young, like it could be really helpful. Okay. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody makes money being in front of others. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how does gaming connect you to others? Um, well, I meet new people all the time by gaming, like, um, like I said, with my YouTube channel, um, some people found me through the YouTube channel and some of them, like, I, they're like my best friends. Like I haven't seen them in real life, but I talk to them all the time and it's like, it's really helped me connect with others because like, also with my friend, he moved away. And so I was like, no, he's gone, but we get to, at least like we play games together all the time. And so it's not like we're, we're completely just spread up, like, completely like spread apart and we can't hang out with each other and so not a lot this part always melts my heart because i have to you know i get in trouble a lot from other parents for what i'm trying to support here Mm -hmm. and they're like oh screen time is so terrible and i'm like it's not screen time it's connection time you know it's like they're connecting with other humans and making real friendships so that's really cool to hear from your mouth sammy especially about your friend moving away um, okay, I have a question. Is there anything you wish your parents now? Hold on, Joni. <laughs> Is there anything you wish they actually would have done differently? Um, I'm not exactly sure because, like, like I don't, I don't know because she, she like, like talks with me like, hey, if we're gonna go somewhere, then she lets me know, so then she doesn't have to like 
kick me out of a game when you have to go somewhere. And so I know when to stop. And it just, it just seems like everything, like she knows pretty much how to like put everything together and like what time to do this and what time to do that. So yeah, um, they did say parents. You have oh, a dad too. So make sure oh, you include him. Oh, um, <laughs> well, oh, well, um, yeah. Is there anything you wish your dad would have done differently it, it, along the journey anywhere? And this isn't oh. like a condemnation against your parents. It's like, yeah. Hey, like for you other parents listening right now, like there is one thing that you guys, my parents could have done a little differently. I'll give you an example. My son, Ryland, who's now 17, going to be 18 in the summer. He's like, I actually wish more money would have been poured into equipment. So I could have been a streamer, you know? And I'm like, shoot, you're right. Like that would have been a great thing to support you on. So anything like that. Um, oh, okay. So, well, you said like throughout the journey. So I was thinking about the present, but I guess in like the past, like I said, like the communication, um, it's just all pretty much all about communication because like, like I said, you got to tell like the kids when something's happening. So you know what to do and when to get off, but also with the, with the equipment, um, I feel like, I feel like we're pretty good on that. Um, cool. Like, I feel like we've been able to get like the things I need to like do certain things like streaming and all that. And honestly, I feel, I feel like we've done like a pretty good job. Oh, <laughs> well, and um, something I didn't put in my TED talk, you guys, uh, Stephanie and Joni is I was going to have this segment about, you know, my oldest son has a baseball scholarship. I have a 22 year old and we would spend $400 on a baseball bat and like $300 on his glove, you know, just to support him. And then when it came to, oh, you want a cool gaming chair? Well, no, that's way too much money, right? <laughs> or you, you want a new thing you want a new keyboard all oh, that's too much and we realized we were actually creating a division between the importance of equipment for what we wanted to put our money into and support and so we had we had a big shift on that too everybody yeah. so we started feeling really bad like our youngest son he he wasn't an athlete so as much and so think about all the money that we put into right. our athlete compared to our gamer so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, well, and just a little side note: we actually haven't had to spend a lot of money on this kid because he won a game show and he bought us all of his own equipment. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I thought I'd bring that up because I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> no. What game, what game show did you win? Well, it, it was. It was just like it's not like one of the biggest game shows, but it was called. It was called The Noise, and it was like on Universal Kids, mm -hmm. and it was like where you had to make the least amount of noise possible, and if you if you do all the obstacles without making any noise, and I had to do it with a friend, like you, you the friend win, that you, moved away actually. Yeah, oh. you, you win five thousand dollars, like, and you split it, and so my friend and I like won everything. Like there was like a PS4, like a headset, and all this stuff, and so we won all of it. And so like we split in and like I bought a trampoline, I bought um <laughs> he bought computer. he bought a computer, he bought a webcam, yeah. he bought I mean, yeah. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Yeah, my son sells rainbow vacuums so he can buy new controllers and things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. There we go. Yeah. And my yeah. son, my son was able to trade like something he had like a Mac um oh. screen for a gaming computer. And so he got it for free. So I mean, like. I think it's cool how they're willing to find other avenues if we can't support them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we got to start closing shop here today on our podcast. This has been a joy. Um, we just want to give you guys the last word, both of you. Uh, what are your biggest takeaways for yourself and others when it comes to gaming? Just kind of an overview of what you wish others knew and such. Yeah, um oh there's like to tell every, like uh, my overview about it yeah um just if you're really passionate about it and you know like if you're not spending mm -hmm. like like you're spending like a good amount of time on it not like too much but like a good amount then I don't know just keep going on to your passion but also try and turn it into like something that you can uh, maybe profit out of like maybe doing a YouTube channel just growing on a platform and not just like gaming all day and maybe you do game 
but then you try and turn it into like something um like a platform and so I feel like that's one of the most important things to turn to a platform that's cool that's great advice all right Joni you what's your biggest takeaway for yourself and others today you know what I kind of more for others I just want because I know a lot of people don't support kids gaming I think I think parents need to take a good deep look at themselves and look at their activity level and their screen time and how much community they're in because I think their kids are probably in more community they're doing less screen time than even the parents and um and I just I really implore parents to get to know their kids and and not be so authoritative in their kids life and develop a relationship understand the passion their kids have for what they're doing and again there needs to be balance always need to be balance um, no kid should be spending 15 hours a day on their computer. Not one kid doesn't care. I don't care if you're making a million dollars, you know, you know, get a life, get outside, get some fresh air, but, um, but support your kids and try to understand them and give them the respect they deserve. Yes. Yeah. I'm just, Kara, I am just excited that we met another fellow person that's <laughs> with us in this um, journey. Yeah. I absolutely. wish I would have had that. However, I can support you guys. You let me know. I'm, I'm, hey, maybe we need, I don't know if there's some kind of pro, nonprofit discuss, a group, but there needs to be some kind of group. Like, a, I don't know. Is there That's a, what we're trying to do. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, I'm with you. I'm with you, ladies. Aw. And Sammy, I'm sure you're the benefactor of that. And then you'll parent your kids, you know, in the way that they want to go to. So it's, it's really cool. Can All we right. Well, we got to end here channel. officially. Can we do a shout out to his channel? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, please. Oh, well. My channel is called King Sam a lot, and so I, and I just mainly upload like Minecraft videos, and yeah. Get, spell it for him. Oh, well, should I put it in the chat? Well, no, get, no, no, no. Just oh. spell it, and then I'll put it in our um, oh, yeah. the thing at the bottom. Well, um, it's K I N G like King, and then no spaces, then Sam a lot. So it's S A M M E L O T. E L O T. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you for joining thank us you. on this podcast of ending the gaming war from the perspective of people who do not game with gamers. And go ahead, Stephanie. You can. I close. wanted to remind you guys all out there that please subscribe to us. Also, we just now have a new website called endingthegamingwar.org. Please come follow us. Also, we want to know that we have set up like a coaching kind of between mom to mom, non-gamer to not mom to non-gamer mom. If you're interested, it's on our website. If you're interested in maybe participating in that, we do have a small fee, but we would love to be able to help you, support you in any way in this journey. With yeah, you. if you want a coaching session on how do I create balance with my kid or my kid just yelled at me, what do I do? We want to be there for you. Maybe Joni can um, be one of our coaches someday. So yeah. there you go. I'd like that. Sounds good. All right. All right, signing off. Thanks for joining us on our podcast. Thank you. Bye.